to tell you what a night and what a day. I have the weirdest life, I really do. Once again, I find myself in the middle of a brouhaha as I appear to have run afoul of probably the worst woman in American politics, Marjorie Taylor Greene, the Congress <laughs> person from the 14th District of Georgia, is unhappy. She's specifically unhappy with me. She's had a tough couple of days. On our show Tuesday night, MTG, clan mom as we call her, earlier in the day, <laughs> called three of her fellow Republicans pro-pedophile for supporting Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson's nomination to the Supreme Court, which is lovely, a lovely thing to say. So I made a joke. I said, where is Will Smith when you need him? And, <laughs> and the audience laughed. And then so she saw it. And she decided she's going to try to get some political mileage out of this. This is what she does instead of working. She tweets. After she saw it, she tweeted, ABC contacts my employer. This threat of violence against me by Jimmy Kimmel has been filed with the Capitol Police. She called the police <laughs> and reported this. Not only did she call the police, she called the same police she voted against giving a congressional gold medal to for defending our Capitol against the insurrection. She helped incite on January 6th. That's who she called, the people she wanted to defund. It's amazing how quickly you can go from these liberals who can't see anything anymore to, what do you say? I'm calling the cops. <laughs> Must be that cancel culture they're always talking about. So I, after processing the fact that someone called the police on me, believe it or not, this has never happened to me in my life. I tweeted back, I wrote, officer, I'd like to report a joke. <laughs> a, lot, and a lot of people liked it, they hit like, which triggered her, I guess, the sweet little snowflake, because she tweeted again. This afternoon, she wrote, you weren't joking. You hide your misogyny and your racism behind your jokes on ABC. This was a dog whistle to the violent left to assault me or worse. And you're misspelled you're, of course, already inspiring <laughs> fantasies of violence against me. How many new death threats will I get that are your fans? Well, that's nice. She thinks I have fans. I guess that's good. <laughs> but now listen, not only don't I condone death or any kind of threats against anyone, especially since I get dozens of them a week myself from the sickos who align with you. I also find it very rich that a person who did this in her campaign ad <laughs> is suddenly whining about fantasies of violence. How does this even compute? This woman, uh, you may remember, she is the one who endorsed fringe conspiracy theories and repeatedly indicated support for executing prominent Democratic politicians. Now she's dialing 911 because she got made fun of. She's a snowflake and a sociopath at the same time. A snowsiopath, as we have <laughs> from now on. But, and nobody does anything. I feel like maybe other Republicans like having her around to make the rest of them seem normal. And by the way, if she's going to report me to the police, if that's how she wants to play it, I'll report you right back. And I, and I won't go to the police. I'll go to the Justice League, OK? In fact, <laughs> Bring me my writing desk, will you? Thank you. And Guillermo, thank you. Bring me my writing chair. And Jeff, if you would, I'd love to have some writing music while I do this, because I'm writing a letter. I'm going right to the top. Dear Batman. <laughs> How's it hanging? Knowing you, probably upside down. <laughs> ha, ha. I'm writing about a woman who might be a supervillain. <laughs> like the Riddler, she believes the world is full of coded messages. Like the Joker, she thinks she is funny. <laughs> and like the Penguin, she is five foot three. Please check her out. Love to Robin, love Jim. Okay, now Guillermo, all we have is a birthday card. So I'm gonna go ahead and Seal this up. I would like you to, you know who to bring this to, right? Yes. Yeah. Get this to Gotham City at once. And okay. don't hesitate. All right. <laughs> to the Cape Crusader to handle. And in the meantime, I'll keep my Jewish space laser set to gazpacho in case. <laughs> And by the way, it wasn't just Marjorie uh, who's all fired up. I got mean tweets from Diamond and Silk, which hurts because you know I'm a big fan. And even the Ven Molester Florida Congressman Matt Gates weighed in on this. He wrote, note to Jimmy Kimmel, not only would Marjorie Taylor Greene's husband make quick work of you, but rep 
MTG herself would make quick work of you. Kimmel would not last too long if he were interested in engaging in unprovoked, terrible violence against this congresswoman. Okay, what are you suggesting, another threesome? I don't know, but <laughs> this imbecile, this student body president gone bad. I wrote back, note to Rep Matt Gates: stay indoors, it's Girl Scout cookie season. <laughs> And that, believe it or not, all that is maybe only the second dumbest Hollywood versus Washington feud of the day. Senator Ted Cruz of Texas went after Mr. T last night. Mr. T tweeted, I just received my second Moderna booster vaccine. I feel good. I'm going to still wear my mask and keep my distance because the virus ain't over, fool. Grr. And I want you to know it took every ounce of strength I have to not do a Mr. T impression when I read that. <laughs> He made no mention of anybody, he just said he would keep wearing a mask. Well, Senator Cruz replied to this. That was not written to him. Bizarre. 535 members of Congress can attend the State of the Union without wearing masks. Still not good enough for Hollywood. And again, I have to ask, where's Will Smith when you need him? <laughs> Mr. T, by the way, is, you know, he's about to turn 70. He's a cancer survivor. He had a rare form of lymphoma. Ted Cruz attacks him for putting a mask on his own face. Hypocrisy is to Ted Cruz what Scientology is to Tom Cruise. It's a way of life. <laughs> I think Ted may be just, just jealous because Mr. T has the haircut he's really been trying to get. <laughs> Maybe he's jealous because Mr. T's beard doesn't look like you rubbed a jellyfish on the floor of a barber shop. I don't know. <laughs> Today, in case you don't know, is World Health Day, uh, which is established in 1950 by the World Health Organization, the WHO. This year's theme is Our Planet, Our Health, which is, I think, better than last year's theme, which was Who Cares? Some people <laughs> took it the wrong way. But Nancy Pelosi celebrated World Health Day by finding out she has coronavirus, which explains why Tucker Carlson had an erection for 11 hours today. <laughs> Pelosi tested positive two days after she made out with the president at the White House. <laughs> the White House isn't worried. They claim she's not considered to be a close contact. <laughs> if that's not a close contact, <laughs> what are they waiting for, full penetration? That's a close contact. <laughs> that's just... Anyway, the, um, the good news out of the Senate today was this. On this vote, the yeas are 53, the nays are 47, and this nomination is confirmed. Jackson is the first black woman on the Supreme Court. She got yes votes from all Senate Democrats and three pro-pedophile Republicans. <laughs> Today was also an exciting day for sports fans. Baseball is back. The Dodgers opened in Colorado. Tomorrow, actually, they open, right? Tomorrow, yes. Are you excited about it? Very excited. I love baseball. Jeremy loves baseball. I love baseball. I haven't had a good seventh inning stretch in, I don't know, months. But <laughs> I thought this was interesting. Cracker Jack. You know the thing you buy some of with peanuts in the song, even though it already has peanuts? <laughs> Cracker Jack, this week, unveiled a special edition to celebrate women in sports. They changed the Cracker Jack logo from Jack to Jill. It's Cracker Jill, and they have five different representations of women in stupid-looking sailor outfits on the back. <laughs> Is this really a tribute to women? Does this mean we're going to get a Jill the Ripper, too? <laughs> While spring training may be over, there's still plenty of excitement in the Sunshine State. That's right. It's time for another edition of This Week in Florida. Drop the knife. Drop the knife. Drop the knife. Drop the knife. Drop the knife now. Well, you know, she should have dropped the knife. I Clean up on aisle four. Oh, what's that? Oh, we're getting a... We got your letter. We'll take care of it. Wow. Okay. Oh, my God. The bat signal works. <laughs> uh, and by the way, I wanted to say, you know, all these crazy people in Congress, all of these low IQ individuals in Congress right now, there's one guy who's responsible for that, and that's Donald Trump. And I have to say, no, Zod, I want to thank Sean Hannity, because now that Trump is out of office, Hannity is, but you, th you would think he's been going hard at President Biden, but the truth is he's been speaking in signals. He's been sending very cleverly coded messages, narrating what he sees 
maybe more clearly than anyone, uh, the brazen and unchecked hypocrisy we're being bombarded with every day. He's been saying things that seem to be about Biden, but are quite plainly about someone else. First, new evidence tonight that we, you, the American people, all of us, we were all lied to. Frankly, we did win this election. We did win this election. We were lied to by Joe Biden. You know, we won Georgia, just so you understand. Declaring that he could beat the virus as president, told that lie a lot. We're going to beat this coronavirus, or whatever you want to call it, and we're going to beat it soundly. And Biden's lies are so bad that even the Washington Post is calling him out for his lies. The Washington Post new report out today. 1,100 lies and mistruths in October alone. <laughs> Almost everything he says is poorly read from a teleprompter. They sacrifice every day for the furniture, the future. And today, yet again, he struggled to get words out. And an ominous, really an, an ominous, Obama amnesty, amnesty, Obama amnesty. What kind of president needs a no card to answer a basic and predictable question? In his hand on a White House piece of stationery were five handwritten bullet points. Number five clearly reads, I hear you. Joe, let's be honest, he's never particularly a smart or a bright guy. <laughs> Don't expect Joe Biden to ever right the ship or take responsibility. No, I don't take responsibility at all. <laughs> Joe is humiliating our entire country on the world stage. But we do have a very special relationship. In fact, I'll get that little piece of vinegar for. Just when you thought Biden couldn't get any worse. Well, he did. Very fine people on both sides. And any more divorce from reality, he is. If you have a windmill and they say the noise causes cancer. <laughs> As Joe Biden completely mismanages COVID-19. This is going to go away without a vaccine. It's going to go away and it's uh, we're not going to see it again. Where are the tests, Joe? So I said to my people, slow the testing down, please. No doubt. Vladimir Putin is just shaking in his boots. I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. Jen Psaki clarifying Biden's remarks. I realize that there is a need for some clarification. Oh, he really meant to say this. I said the word would instead of wouldn't. The sentence should have been, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't or why it wouldn't be Russia. And he dragged his feet on resupplying Ukraine's army. The president broke the law, overriding Capitol Hill by freezing that military aid to Ukraine. Or is Joe going to do what he usually does, and that's bypass co-equal branches of government and do whatever the hell he wants? I have an article, too, where I have the right to do whatever I want. Thankfully, Joe was not allowed to get behind the wheel of a tractor trailer. We have a mumbling, bumbling buffoon as president. Bing, bing, bong, 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 bong. Not one, but two Fox News reporters, stupid. You ask a lot of stupid questions. What a stupid question that is. Stupid question. Sippy Cup Joe. I like to call him Sippy Cup. Joe Biden is probably, not trying to be rude here, but one of the dumbest, least capable presidents we've ever had. But that was the original. Uh, chart. Not too busy to spend nearly every weekend in Delaware at your beach house, right, Joey? This visit marked the 358th the president has made to one of his properties and the 266th trip he's made to one of his golf clubs since taking office. Now he's mocking Americans that have a different point of view than him. Pocahontas, you remember Pocahontas? Crazy Bernie. He's a crazy man. Ah, uh, I don't remember. Of course, his awkward touching, hugging. Beyond cringeworthy, pretty gross to me. I just start kissing them. It's like a magnet. I just, I don't even know where. Grab them by the. He got caught red-handed. Joe got caught red-handed. Fellas, I need eleven thousand votes. Give me a break. I don't think it gets any weaker or more more pathetic and embarrassing than that. Welcome to the team. If you like that video, then put a ring on it. Click the subscribe button below. Oh, oh, oh.